Five Sports, Sam Mays, selloutcrowd.com, and just one fantastic Oklahoma State analyst and a guy who's who's been there and done that when it comes to big games. Sam, write the script for me on how Oklahoma State wins this game against Texas tomorrow. <laughs> Coming up blazing, Paul. Yeah, I know. I just you know, I'm sitting there thinking, man, you can't. I can't get a little warm up. You can't serve me <laughs> in or you know, give me a little uh, something to start with. You know, I, honestly, I think it just comes down to Alan Bowman. You know, I, I sat in the stands a few weeks ago for the final, final Bedlam game, honestly thinking that it was going to be Oklahoma just beating the hell out of Oklahoma State in that game. And then what happens next was crazy. Alan Bowman comes out, throws a bunch of completions early in the first quarter of that game, backs the Oklahoma defense up significantly. And then you guys know this as well as I do. It's crazy how, you know, it's been probably 20 years since we all sat down and watched the team do it this way. But the Cowboys do it. Their whole goal is to be within 10 points going into the fourth quarter. That's it. That's what Oklahoma State needs to do in order to be competitive, in order to give themselves an opportunity to win every game they play is be within 10 points going into the fourth quarter. And if they can do that, they rely on one of the best running backs in the country, Ollie Gordon, to go ahead and put that work in. And let me tell you something, that kid just gets stronger every single time he he carries the ball. He's better the next time he carries it. And so if Bowman can come out, take command of the Oklahoma State offense, complete a bunch of passes early, and doesn't even be deep balls, right? Doesn't need to be, uh, you know, talking 15-plus yard plays. It needs to be eight to eight to 12 yard plays, you know, those just backing those linebackers off the line of scrimmage a little bit and then giving that offensive line a chance to, you know, just kind of get it going, right. Get the run game going. And if they can do that, then they have an opportunity with Texas. You know, I think the the best player on the field is Ollie Gordon in this game. I think the next 10 probably go to Texas, you know, now the flip side of it would be, this is, you know, the Oklahoma state defense has been lucky this year because the offense has been able to eat so much clock up, right? I think defensively the scheme is not very good. Uh, I, I don't understand anybody that runs a three-man front unless your defensive line looks like Texas, right? you got a defensive line like Texas or Alabama or one of these bigger SEC schools. Cool, go ahead and run a three-man front because you got a nose guard that's out there eating dimes and crapping out nails. Like you got to have that kind of dude in the middle to get this thing done. And you need a couple of six, seven, 295-pound run stoppers and pass rushers on the edge. Oklahoma State has nothing like that. I mean, they've got they've got chihuahuas on the defensive line on the edges compared to what a true 3-4, uh, 50 front looks like. And so what's helped them is the defense is always rested, and they got a couple of linebackers that can play this game and a couple of safeties that can really play this game. Instinctual kids that make plays, they tackle well, they group tackle, they just don't make a whole lot of uh, ridiculous, you know, non mistakes that will like plague a defense, miss tackles and things like that. They don't do that. They got some kids that can play in the second and third levels of this team. So if they, if Ollie Gordon and group can keep the defense fresh, well, then they can handle Texas for four quarters, I feel like offensively, because as good as the Longhorns are and skill position players, you know, I'm not, it's not like they're out there just dropping 50 points on teams either. You know, they, they are kind of a more of a methodical group themselves when they're playing at their best, in my opinion. So, I think that this is a, you know, if I'm if I'm betting on this game, I, I'm probably taking Texas by double digits, honestly. Um, but there is an opportunity here for Oklahoma State to win this game, but it's definitely going to rely on the arm of Allen, Allen Bowman. What was going through your mind during the struggles last week against BYU as that clock was ticking and that lead and just, I mean, there was time, obviously, and they, they came back and won that game, but uh, at its lowest point, what were you kind of thinking amongst the o- Oklahoma State collective about what was going on? Oh, I was just dog cussing everybody. Just you worthless, <laughs> you know. Like yeah. it just, you know, it was just a. It was a really uninspired performance. You know, you, you think you take the field in the position that Oklahoma State is. I feel the same way about UCF. Like, what are y'all doing? You're not better than anybody. Like, I don't know what what has happened this season at any point that you feel like you don't have to prepare or take the field with the same sense of urgency that you had in Bedlam to play every darn team on your on your schedule whether that is UCF or Houston or BYU, everybody needs your max attention because you're not a very good football team. For some reason, it's just one of those things where the 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 stars have aligned and when moments when you need to take over games, you've got a great player that's able to do it on his own. I don't know if it's more of a testament to Oklahoma State's offense or just the state of Big 12 defenses 
at this point. But Ollie Gordon is just blowing teams up by himself. I don't even think the Oklahoma State offensive line. If I could grade that unit, I'd give him probably a C, right? Maybe a C plus for the season. Like they're not right home about guys. No one on that offensive line is playing in the NFL. Right, this is just a bunch of kids that have gained a bunch of confidence because they've got, you know, a Heisman Trophy contender at some point in his career running behind them. You know, so it's it's just one of those things that I just don't feel like they could ever take the field and not feel like we have to play our best game today. And they've done it three times here in the last five games against UCF. They got killed against Houston, and they did it again against BYU. And they should have never put themselves in that position. To me, that's leadership on the field and it's leadership off the field. They've got to get it right, get off this whole. Like, I get it. You didn't expect to be where you are, and everything is hunky-dory and exciting. Everybody's all smiles. But, I mean, you are where you are now. So you've got football to play. You know, you've got games to win. They beat UCF, and we're talking about, you know, a potential New York Six game for this Oklahoma State team, which is just insane when you consider everything that happened earlier in the season. So, I, obviously, they're not going to take Texas lightly. I would expect them to come out there and play their tails off early in, the, in this game as they can, but it was definitely frustrating watching them take the field with a lackluster attitude, you know, looking down at a couple of opponents that they're not significantly better than. Where would you grade this season on, on Mike Gundy's coaching job? Um, because they were after South Alabama, like anybody outside of Stillwater had kind of jumped off the boat completely. Yeah, no, it, it's frustrating for sure. You know, and he wins coach of the year in the Big 12, and you know, I kind of figured that was going to happen. I would have gave it to Neil Brown, in my opinion. You know, Mike Gundy is a is an elder statesman in this league. That guy's been around way too long to take the field in the first four games of the season running a three-quarterback system. Have the worst loss in 20 years to a South Alabama team uh, that didn't deserve to be playing and still want to alone beating them and beating them the way that they did it. And you lose to Iowa State on the road, and Iowa State's defense is somehow, some way, one of the best in the league every year. And so I can, you know, I'll take that. And Iowa State lost, but there's no way you should lost to South Alabama. There's no way you should have lost to UCF the way that you did. You know, and this this team could be better than what they are, and that's frustrating. You know, to me, this is not a second year coach. This guy's been here almost 20 years. You know, and at some point, he's going to have to get past this whole. And maybe maybe it's you know, Oklahoma State fans, you guys know this as well as I do. They're the happiest, go luckiest group of people you'll ever meet. We won 10 games. What a great season. They got 30,000 people at tailgate every single game. The home field advantage is tremendous. They are die hard. We're happy to be your peer type of fan base. So when you give them 10, they're ecstatic about it, right? But the rest of us, and it's all these older folks, the rest of us, if you're 40 or below, you're looking around like, okay, cool. Y'all got a top 25 ticket price that we're paying to get into this stadium. You got top 10 facilities still in the country. But, and we want more better results, right? Especially with the Big 12 turning over the way that it is. No more Texas, no more Oklahoma. Who should lead this thing? It should be Coach Gundy in Oklahoma State. And it doesn't seem like they're in position to take the reins like we would have hoped to see at the end of this season. You know, you're playing, there's the title opportunity ahead of you. I don't feel confident that they're going to win the thing. But every, this will be another season where they leave it and everybody's like, man, what a great year. Mike Gundy did it again. You know, go pokes, but it's the under, to me, they should have done this four times since 2011, but they just keep falling short and, you know, they can't beat Oklahoma. They can't uh, win Bedlam. They, they should have won Bedlam six times in the last 10 years. They had the better team three of those six times and they continue to lose it over and over again. You know, so it's just, uh, it's just this weird place that everybody is in where the die hard, you know, true just fans, the fanatics of this football team are just, you know, they love Mike Gundy more than anything. And I think there's a new group of folks that are, you know, paying money, paying big dollars, right, to go watch Oklahoma State football that aren't necessarily feeling satisfied with top 50 recruiting classes, you know, and then you falling short year in, year out when it comes to being in championship contention. So it's um it's a odd time for sure. You know, I, I think that Sark deserved a, an opportunity at a at a coach of the year. I think he had an excellent year. Neil Brown had an excellent year. You know, Gundy's feels a little bit weird to me, but you know, it is what it is. I don't have the votes.
Yeah, uh, I, I'm right there with you. We, we had a conversation about this the other day. And it's like, hey, good for Gundy. Like, nothing against him. But it's just like, yeah, you could probably make a better case for a couple of the other guys. But, Sam, you sort of touched on this at the beginning. Uh, obviously, the, the Oklahoma State offense, I think you're dead on with Alan Bowman's going to have to make some plays to open some things up. But when you look at that Texas offense and all those weapons, I mean, that, that toy chest full of weapons that Sark has, um, what – stands out to you in terms of what you know Oklahoma State does and doesn't do well and what you see as the biggest challenges or you know places for opportunity what have you tomorrow in that matchup I'll, I'll tell you right now if Texas comes out and runs the ball successfully early in this game they're going to score 50 points on Oklahoma State like they'll they'll score at will and they so the Cowboys are going to stop the run and make Quinn yours be the guy that's going to go out there and, and get the ball to those weapons make him throw the ball 25 plus times in this game. And I think you maybe have an opportunity because Oklahoma state's got some dudes in the back end that are ball hawks. They'll go get it. If you throw it up there to them. And there's some of those kids are big, big and physical. They can run. They've got some decent speed on the back end. It, it all comes down to that front line for me. I think there's a significant advantage with that Texas offensive line uh, over the Oklahoma state defensive line. I, that's where I think this game is lost for the Cowboys. Sam, Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, enjoy the game tomorrow. Um, you know, for Big 12 fans' sake, uh, I think I think there's there's only one fan base that's rooting for Texas, and that's Texas. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. OU Oklahoma, fans out yeah. Here yeah. Oh, yeah I actually me. saw somebody write, some OU fan wrote Texas fight on Twitter, oh. and I almost threw up. Yeah. I was like, you've got to be crazy. Like, y'all hate Oklahoma State that much that you can't, <laughs> you're going to cheer on Texas. Look, you, know, you guys know this about me. I can't stand Texas. Like, I got PTSD for Vince Young, so I'm never going to. <laughs> I will cheer against Texas every game that they play, but uh, it's a personal thing for me. Yeah, I think <laughs> – Thanks uh, so much for having me, man. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot, Sam. Uh, I think the, the SEC alliance, it makes some sense of like kind of why they're – teammates but yeah. at the same time it makes for the grossest alliance it's just like yeah. it's turned into such Correct. a us versus them thing i i i don't jive with that sam i'm with you man I, it just feels wrong in so many ways it does absolutely yeah. all right man thanks a lot appreciate yeah. you all right guys have a good one